Hello and welcome back to our channel Forensic Science Public Desk India. And now we are going to learn about the topic bite marks as part of forensic odontology. This is lecture number 25 of Forensic Medicine UGC at Forensic Science. Let's proceed into the topic. Introduction Bite mark analysis is based on the principle that no two mouths are alike. It is as important as fingerprinting and DNA profiling. Bite marks may be found virtually on any part of the human body, common sites being the face, neck, arm, hand, finger, shoulder, nose, ear, breast, legs, buttocks, waist, and female genitals. In all these particular spots, we can identify or we can observe the presence of bite marks on various occasions on various types of crimes. Bite marks are commonly seen in cases of sexual assault, children abuse or child abuse, bite marks on foodstuffs, in other cases on police people when thieves are been uh, biting them or in any other cases like animal bite marks can be seen or differentiating all these particular uh, characteristics of bite marks with individuality. Classification of bite marks. Bite marks based on infliction are classified into human bite or non-human bite. If it is human bite, generally if it is of one side of arch, then it will be in the C shape. And if it is a complete bite of two arms, that means two jaws, that is a mandibular jaw and also the maxillary jaw, then if two jaws are there, then that bite mark will be visible as oval shape. And if it is animal bite, generally it will be of U shape. So criminal or non-criminal, so in uh, criminal cases we can see sexual assault or child abuse and non-criminal self-infected self that means the person bited himself wantonly or uh, the love bites or the accidental marks can be seen in non-criminal and uh, it can be offensive or defensive. So in for defensive purpose also the person also bites other person. So offensive it is uh, as part of sexual assault or any other uh, uh, of offending kind of thing can be involved in offensive type of uh, bite marks. There are seven types of bite marks which can be seen uh, according to their appearance and uh, the degree of injury inflicted onto the body. One is the, the hemorrhage. A small bleeding spot can be observed when it is uh, of hemorrhage and we can also see abrasion marks and undamaged skin on undamaged mark on the skin so this will be called as abrasion let's say like that contusion will be seen where the ruptured blood vessels will be seen so this particular spot in this abrasion one all combination also we can see so blood vessels and bruises can be seen when it is of a contusion and if it is a laceration near puncture of the skin can be seen so these are the, the punctures of the skin in this particular uh, infliction of bite mark and uh, incision can also be seen where the complete uh, uh, puncture or thorn skin can be seen in this particular incision and uh, evolution removal of the skin so this is uh, the removed skin which is coming as uh, the hanging ties so this is uh, the evolution and artifact means complete bite removing the muscle or uh, the tissues uh, along with the skin after the bite so these are the types of uh, bite marks which can be seen according to their appearance and injury degree of injury and classification based on appearance of bite marks can be said as clear defined obviously defined and quite noticeable lacerated so the degree starts from here to here so lacerated is this one this one is lacerated one this is quite noticeable this is uh, three and this can also be three okay and this is this is obviously defined so this is two and this is also two and the clearly defined one is this one that means uh, the impression of the teeth will be easily visible in the first type so the complete uh, appearance of the teeth and what is its shape and what is its uh, complete uh, that di di dimension of the teeth will be completely visible in the clearly defined one and uh, it gets decreased as the range uh, decree of the uh, injury is increasing so this one this side the clear clarity and definition will be decreased then this side clarity and definition will be increased so here are some images uh, which will make you easy to understand what are various bite marks so in hemorrhage bite marks we can see internal bleeding and it will become as a red one and here uh, we can see the suction uh, due to the mouth and uh, tongue and laceration bite mark a little opening of uh, skin will be seen and bleeding can be observed so this will be the lacerated bite mark 
and the contused bite mark is pressure and blood vessels are been damaged completely here bruises can be seen so these are the marks which are as part of contusion and this is evolution this means the skin is been removed or skin tried to be removed by using the bite mark force and then we can see abrasion so abrasion is also kind of abrasion up bruises will be seen and bite mark pattern can be seen and it is becoming reddish in color and incised wound that means the incisions can be seen at the sides of teeth so most probably this one will be the uh, lower jaw that means mandibular jaw and this will be the maxillary jaw the pressure of maxillary jaw has been inflicted in very uh, dangerous manner that indeed inflicted the incision wounds due to the bite mark and we can see artifacts that means complete removal of the tissue and the muzzle from the area where it has been bited so these are various types of bite marks characteristics of bite marks so generally we can see class characteristics and individual characteristics so class characteristics are which are common between a, a group of people and individual means obviously it is for particular individual so due to class characteristics we can say if it is u shaped generally it will be of a, a animal and sometimes humans we may also show u shaped kind of uh, Uh, bite mark it it's no need to be compulsorily u shaped for animals and we can see c shaped if it is one sided bite mark that means either it would be because of maxillary or mandibular so if it is maxillary maxillary is most common uh, one sided bite mark which will be giving us the c shape and uh, in this particular case we can also see uh, infliction of molar injury on to the skin and uh, generally if it is of uh, involving two sides that means both mandibular and the maxillary then we can see oval and round shaped with gap so the injury will be something like this sorry so here one c and here one c it will be not complete oval like this or complete oval like this so a gap will be there so this is the gap uh, between two jaws so here we can see a depiction of uh, the particular injury so by this you can understand how the maxillary injuries will be inflicted onto the body so drag marks from the upper incisor teeth can be observed in this particular direction drag mark to inner side and the upper left first premolar injury is this one and drag marks of first premolar onto the right side here and these are incis incisors wounds and we can see canines are also placed because canines are sharp and that will be causing lot of uh, injury impact onto the skin and other side are on a mandibular side we can see the clear uh, appearance of uh, each and every teeth that the lower can left canine is here and the lower lateral incisor is here and the uh, particular sequence uh, whatever it is placed here in this particular image we can understand that there is a quite large difference between the gap of uh, canine and lateral incisor and both central incisors are side by side and the lateral incisor and canine are maintaining little distance and this both are quite different with this both so this will be the individual characteristic of a person to identify whether uh, he is the particular one or not when we collect the suspected samples properly so uh, petechial hemorrhages can be seen inside uh, the bite mark in middle part so from all this area we can observe that one particular thing so this is uh, due to the suction and uh, uh, reverse pressure of uh, the mouth uh, towards the palate rugose surface and as well as towards the tongue so that's why we will be able to see this and this particular suction marks are common among the love bites so let's see the mechanism of bite marks so there are three types of uh, things which we can consider as part of uh, mechanism one is a tooth pressure the where the incisal edge that means incisors lateral or central of anterior teeth and occlusal edges of posterior teeth that means the uh, mouth outer side uh, side of the posterior teeth so you can understand what is posterior teeth so cl clinically we will be observing incised and abrasive margins of the teeth in this uh, tooth pressure if tooth pressure is used quite uh, more enough for inflicting the injury then we will be seeing incised and abrasive wounds then Uh, tongue pressure can also be seen pressured by tongue against the te teeth or palatal rugae and distinctive marks are present due to this sucking and thrusting that means uh, i just uh, said you in the previous image that uh, petechial uh, hemorrhages will be formed due to the tongue pressure and uh, later we can see tooth tooth scrape is caused by the 
teeth scraping against the tooth surface that means it is like pinching pinching commonly involves anterior teeth of incisors clinical representation will be giving the start scratches and the abrasions of this particular various mechanisms so all together mixture we also we can see and infliction of the wound may also inflict see the contusion laceration abrasion all these types of injuries together can also be observed on various types of bite marks generally uh, heavily inflicted bite marks are observed in sexual assault factors affecting the bite mark injuries so strength and force of the bite mark how much strength and how much force is used as it is increasing the bite mark injury will also get increased as part of appearance as well as the pain and the struggle of the person will also increase then intervening cloth is one of the important thing uh, we can collect the evidence very nice evidence we'll be getting when there is a clot intervening in between the bite mark and the person then uh, we can collect the dna from this particular clothing and relative movements or struggle posed by the victim or the assailant both can be seen and uh, due to that particular movements we can uh, identify what were the positions of both of them and whether it is self inflicted or it is uh, inflicted by the uh, particular accused or not then the uh, depth of penetration can be measured by seeing its uh, depth and also its size if there is uh, incision or laceration in that particular conditions we can estimate the penetration also when there is contusion the uh, particular area how much it is uh, covered by the contusion or bruises then we can pen see the depth of the penetration or the three dimensional structure we can imagine of the teeth then loose uh, skin bruises uh, due to subcutaneous fat can be seen this will be observed when the person is having uh, more subcutaneous fat less fibrous tissues and less uh, muscular tone then this uh, skin bruises will be observed in more and more bruising effect can be observed in children females and elderly persons in children there will be subcutaneous fat more will be there and whether it is male or female children will be having more infection of this particular injuries and the bruises can be seen in higher amount similarly females due to their sensitive skin and elderly people uh, due to less fibrous tissues and uh, less uh, muscular tone and uh, there is a uh, optimal amount of uh, subcutaneous fat in this uh, elderly people so how to collect the evidence in bite mark analysis we are having two types of evidence to be collected one is the evidence collection from victim and other is evidence collection from the suspect so from uh, victim we can collect the dna swabs from the site of the bite mark or from the clothing of the bite mark and we can take clear images by adjusting the light in a proper manner most preferably positioning the camera at 90 degrees and uh, taking the pictures in various directions that also is uh, very important to see all the characteristics uh, of the bite and the teeth if, if it is clearly defined if it is a fresh bite mark or the person uh, been uh, inflicted with bite mark recently then this particular uh, photography will be highly useful and we can also uh, take castings in rare conditions uh, from the victims but it can be highly useful if we want to collect the evidence from the suspect that means we can take the bite mark uh, samples from inanimate materials like cheese soap or uh, fruit vegetable etc on this uh, the bite marks will be given apple is uh, one of the very good source to determine uh, the bite mark pattern according to this particular inanimate uh, examples then a uh, dental casting on both of the arches with the type of stone that means if the suspect is available and we are having complete uh, right and we completely suspect uh, him that he is the culprit then we can collect uh, his uh, bite marks his uh, dental castings uh, with the complete uh, authorization by using type 2 stone called as master, master cast and we can take the bite marks on either sides and this both samples will be compared and if there is any uh, identical patterns or uh, the arrangement of the teeth can be identified then we can uh, say that it is the uh, same so what are the parts of what are the things which are involved in uh, identification and analysis of bite so it is a uh, the matching of dentition so number of teeth position of the teeth or how it is arranged all these things if we are considering from the standard with the suspected one we can easily match the dentition or we can see the pattern of the individual teeth or also the pattern arrangement in the sequence of the teeth both can be used for comparison between suspect and unknown 
and examination of palatal rugae impressions and the tongue pattern and how uh, they are been inflicted and uh, we know the principle of like to be compared with like so uh, whenever uh, we get the bite mark injuries as uh, the evidence uh, we have to stimulate uh, the similar kind of evidence on any other surface and we can compare this both so examination of palatal rugae is uh, not possible in all the cases of bite marks but it is rarely used and a very less uh, type of research or uh, evidence casework is uh, seen regarding this so these are various uh, topics and concepts related to bite marks Thank you for watching this video. I hope you have understood the video and you will be learning more by referring the books.